the simple observation that on the ground in Ottawa, um, things were kind of chaotic. We didn't have any evidence of planning. We weren't hearing about planning um, and, and no sense of extremism in the, in the violent sense, although there was plenty, plenty of criminality by that point. Okay, and we will be hearing from CSIS directly next week, but I think it might be useful, Monsieur Rochon, you can just uh, elaborate briefly on um, what CSIS can and cannot do and what it was and was not monitoring here, following what Mr. Stewart said. Well, in this particular case, it again refers to uh, extremist elements. So from a terrorism perspective, I had mentioned earlier the, um, the uh, ideologically motivated violent extremism. Uh, which is something that uh, CSIS is coming to grips with and indeed uh, have provided uh, language in and around defining that. Because um, historically, I would say uh, individuals are, are influenced by a singular um, definable belief system. And uh, that's how we used to treat terrorism. There's been an evolution with regard to terrorism as of late. Uh, now there is a confluence of a whole series of, of uh, grievances that, that can come to bear, and uh, it becomes a lot more difficult to track exactly how a particular threat can manifest itself in this IMVE environment. So there are um, xenophobic violence, anti-authority violence, gender-driven violence, other grievances that uh, that CSIS now have to wrap their minds around how do we go after and collect information to protect Canadians against these emerging threats. When it can, as, as opposed to a, a, as I mentioned earlier, a belief system where there is a clear head and a org structure behind a particular organization. In today's world now, we're seeing more and more that a lone wolf, a lone actor, can actually perpetrate a particular extremist violent um, event. Nevertheless, the, the, the tools at our disposal and at CSIS's disposal is very much the CSIS Act that was written in 1984. And there is part 2C of the CSIS Act, uh, or in, indeed part two of the CSIS Act gives four different distinctions as to what they can collect intelligence on. And it describes threats to the security of, of Canada. So in this particular instance, what we were referring to, as you could appreciate, um, federal provinces and, or sorry, provinces and territories representatives would be under the impression that federal government is sitting on a treasure trove of, of classified in intelligence. And based on that intelligence, they would want to know, are we seeing something from an intelligence perspective that would show that, uh, that these protests are organized and that ultimately they constitute an extremist threat to overthrow the government or something to that effect. So specifically with regard to that extremist element, uh, what we were saying here, or what the, the deputy was referring to here is that as of yet, CSIS has not met a threshold to cause them to collect additional intelligence on a broader set of Canadians because they had not seen evidence of, um, of that. That being said, I should, I should just also 